can you practice mindfulness during the workday? Absolutely. And I'm going to show you a few ways to do that right now. So let's start off with some very simple ways and then work up to a few uh, tools that take a little bit more effort but have huge impact. The first way is to bring mindfulness into your workday is to, God forbid, take a break, take a lunch. So many people work through their breaks, through their lunch because they think they've got to do so much and they can't get it done. There's rock hard data, so the research that shows that your productivity after a certain period tanks and just pushing and pushing and pushing through is not as effective. For nearly 30 years now in workshops, I have challenged people to take one week and in that week to actually take a 15 minute break, meaning go away from the desk, go outside if you can for a walk, and to take a lunch and away from your desk. And I have guaranteed them that their productivity will go up. And a lot of times I'm in programs where I go back a week later to check on them. And 100% of the time for 30 years now, Every one of these people have come back a week later sheepishly admitting, yes, they got more done. It's counterintuitive and yet it's true. If you take breaks, let yourself breathe, well, even if it's not mindfully, just go for a walk, even if you're thinking of stuff, you will increase your productivity and you'll be able to be more present and more mindful with what you're doing right in that moment. Okay. Um, another uh, way to, to uh, bring mindfulness in is a lot of times what's happening is we are overwhelmed with stuff in our minds. We've got so many things to do and they may be pretty easy to do, but where we just can't keep up with them. So the strategy that I have is involves some high tech equipment, a coil bound scribbler. And what you do is you turn to the first, first page of the scribbler at the top. You write the first thing you've got to do. Don't write anything else. Turn the page on the top of the next page, write the next thing you've got to do. Flip the page. At the top of the next page, write the next thing you've got to do. When you've got them all done, if you know that's when you turn back to the front. And what this is doing is you're telling your unconscious mind, okay, I hear you, I got it, I'm listening, I'm going to attend to these things. And it can stop bothering you. Then the first thing that you've got, you can now be fully present, fully mindful on that without being distracted by everything else. Jot down everything that you can do about it. The instant you get stuck or feel frustration, flip the page. Don't stop there. Go to the next thing. Focus intently, mindfully on that. Boom, boom, boom. Get that done. Flip the page. Go to the next one. And keep going. The moment you get stuck, just go to the next. When you get to the end, Flip back to the beginning. And if, if there's anything else, like that first round, you will have resolved most of these. The, if there's anything else, just start going through. What's going to happen is 99% of them are going to be no-brainers. But you were overwhelmed and couldn't make progress because you had all of them coming at you. Sort of like being pecked to death by ducks. And so by doing this, you get it out of your head and you can focus and be mindful on each one, one at a time. And there'll be a couple of things left there that are bigger issues that you need to focus on a little more. Then you're going to have the resources without being distracted by the other things to be mindful about those. Make sense? Okay. So. Now, something here to realize is that 
when you are under stress, when or when you're going through all these things in your mind, you're under stress. And this is not a good thing. Because when you are under stress, your body creates about 1400 chemical and 30 hormonal toxins that it pumps through your body. Great in the fight or flight response. Wonderful when we lived in the wild and the wild animal is attacking us. Sucks in the office because it just poisons your body. It also shuts down your brain. And so the more that you're pressuring yourself, you're stressed, all got all these things going through your head, the more you're making yourself inefficient, you're poisoning yourself and you're holding yourself back. So how do you stop that stress response? Well, there's one simple way and this it's works wonders. What you do is you simply take a nice deep breath, one or two. Don't hyperventilate yourself. But what that does is it triggers the relaxation response, which stops the stress response. To simply, when you're feeling that overwhelm, take one or two nice deep breaths, and then you can focus on one thing. Say, okay, what's the first next step I do? You can be present, you can be mindful without your brain uh, being messed up. And if you use the previous tool of the coil bound scribbler, it lets you focus down on one thing that you can do that first next step. And uh, so that's a, another simple thing to stop all the busy, busy, busy stuff in your head and just be present in the workday. No one has to know you did it. If you need to, I've had um, some of my coaching clients, uh, you know, I've, I've told them, if, if you feel you can't do that in the office, go to the bathroom, go into a stall, <sighs> take a nice deep breath or two, and it allows them to center and come back. Okay? So the first couple of times you use it, if you're used to always being busy, busy, busy in your mind and not present, not mindful, it will be hard to break that. So it sometimes is useful to go somewhere else and just <sighs> take that break. Okay, so now what I want to introduce you to is another technique that, that is very powerful. Uh, and this comes from how we make our uh, pictures in our head. Our brains work in pictures. The words are just the surface area. So if I was to ask you how many chairs are in your home, how would you get the answer? You'd walk around in your mind's eye and count, right? Even people who say they can't visualize are visualizing. So what you want to do is understand that there's two ways to make pictures in your head. One is to imagine that you're right back where you, where you are and, and you're reliving that memory uh, of what you had or you're, 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 you're really, really there. You can taste it, you can feel it, and, and it's almost like you're reliving it. The second type of picture is like sort of looking on your phone at a, or at a TV screen at a picture and going, oh yeah, that's happened then. You can see yourself in that picture. Okay, so think now, if you can think of something that you absolutely love to do, could be a hobby, could be time with family, time with friends. So okay, go back to that a memory. The last time, step into it, taste it, feel it, all of that excitement, all of that fun. And now that picture that you got, almost as if you could push it way out in front of you, make it tiny and dim and dark, and swing it way around behind you. And what do you notice happens as you do that? Now, take that picture that's way behind you, bring it right out in front of you and bring it right in Step into it, make it big, bright, colorful. What do you notice? What happens is when we're in the picture, it's called associated. 
we connect with our feelings. When we're not in the picture, it's called dissociated, like looking at a TV or, or a uh, movie screen or a picture on your phone. It's dissociated, the feelings are not connected. It's like when you come back from vacation and you're all excited and you're showing your friends the pictures and, going, and it's like you can relive it. And they're going, oh yeah, that's nice, that's interesting. They're seeing the pictures, they're not associated, they're not getting the feelings. You are, okay? So, what we tend to do, here's the, the, the really wacky thing about our brains, we tend to associate into all the negative, caca, heavy stuff, the stuff where we worry about, that we're anxious about, and we dissociate from all the good things in our lives, all the things we're looking for, yeah, I'm going to do that, yeah, whatever, I'm going to have that. But we're, we carry the heaviness of that. So, here's... The, the technique I call, that I developed called stepping out of stressors. What you do, and start also, this is a muscle, so don't start with huge, massive, heavy, traumatic stuff. Start with some stuff that's mildly annoying. When you're thinking of something, a situation, you're going to find the reason it feels heavy is because you're in it, you're associated in it. And you're going to do just like you did with that picture of something you loved almost like you could oh, push it outside of you. So you're not hiding it from it, you're not running from it, you're still seeing it, but you're not in it, so you're not poisoning your body and shutting it down. You can be mindful and present in dealing with it. Almost like, oh, and that might take some practice. And this is another thing when I'm coaching clients, uh, this one often at first, is difficult for them to do until they've practiced it is have them you know go close the door to their office or go to the bathroom into a stall and just uh, push it outside of that ooky feeling so that that's a technical term by the way uh, and so that it's there and you know what happens you take a deep breath trigger that relaxation response that often happens and then you can be present and mindful and much more resourceful in dealing with it and the more you do it, the more you'll be able to do that without having to go close the door or go to the bathroom. You'll be able to do it much naturally. People don't need to know that you're doing it. You don't have to do this. You just, in your mind, and, and you'll be a lot more resourceful and you can be more present with it instead of being stuck and lost in it. So there you go. There are some simple techniques to practice mindfulness during the workday. If you'd like to explore more, I've made my full Mindfulness 101 program available for free since the pandemic. Just go to saynotostress.com. You can access it all for free. Have fun with it.